9070 GRE might just get 16 gigs of RAM. Nothing faked their photos and AMD's going back to a flagship card. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, August 28th, 2025. We're gonna start off today with a report that's coming out about the 9070 GRE and its potential upcoming worldwide release. Since this card is currently just being sold in the Chinese and Eastern markets, it's not necessarily made its way to everywhere else. But one of the key complaints about this card was that it is kind of a downgrade from the previous generation's GRE, which did have 16 gigs of memory. The current one only has 12. But a report that's coming out from board channels is indicating that it might get upgraded to a 16 gig setup, which would also increase its memory interface, which would then give it an effective higher memory bandwidth, probably putting it in line with the 9070 and 9070 XT. Video Cards does note that board channels report on this kind of stuff hasn't always lived up to the rumors that they put out there, but it is indeed a possibility, but I wouldn't necessarily hold your breath. There's some expectation that it could be coming out by September slash October, but if it does release and it does have 16 gigs of RAM and it does come in between the 9060 XT 16 gig card and the 9070 cards price, it might be a legitimate option for people for gaming. We'll have to see. The 12 gig, as long as it's at a, a decent price, you know, it's it's not necessarily such a bad card. It's just that it is a downgrade from the previous 7900 GRE, at least when it comes to its amount of VRAM. But you know, you're never gonna downgrade if you use today's video sponsor, cause click, clack, thock, pop, these are all the sounds you could be hearing if you decided to upgrade your keyboard to one from today's sponsor, Keychron. While Keychron has become known for their affordable, reliable, and quality keyboards, ranging from bare bone kits that you can build yourself like I did made a Lord of the Rings one, fully built boards with wood accents, or even low profile boards for your traveling types. Keychron is your one stop shop for everything keyboard, keycaps, cables, cases, wrist rests, and more. So you can check it all out via the link below. Big thanks to Keychron for sponsoring. And while Keychron keyboards are the real deal, love tippy typing on my Max board down back at home, uh, nothing's photos weren't the real deal. With the Phone 3 launch, they had some promotional images that they put in some marketing material, and it turns out that they were not taken with the Phone 3 at all, despite the claim that they were. And this is something that nothing has since admitted to. It looks like it was taken from professional photos and then it was actually downloaded from a stock image website as far as we know. And it's hilarious because they had five different photos that they had on their website. And the most egregious one happens to be this one of a car's headlight, because if you zoom in to the reflective bit of chrome right there, you can see the person is taking a picture with just a full fat camera, not a nothing Phone 3. So nothing came out and said that essentially this was a breakdown in processes. This was not them trying to deceive people. It was just an oopsie doopsie in terms of new teams that were managing what's going on. Somebody suggested that you should just use older phones because it was a placeholder for this marketing material before the, re the phone was ready for mass production. So they had to get the marketing material ready before they had the phone ready. And then, you know, they could have just used the phone too. And then if somebody discovered that the photos were wrong, at least they're still using their own stuff. Nothing said that this is exactly how they used to do it. And the thing that happened were new teams and people were involved and the processes broke down and that this won't happen again. The only problem with that is that this isn't the first time that nothing has done a little bit of a slight miscommunication when it comes to their marketing material where they did a video comparison between them and the 16 Pro Max when the 60 Pro Max was filming on its ultra wide lens and the nothing was filming on its main lens and it was an unfair comparison. Nothing said they would be more careful to ensure greater scrutiny in future comparisons. Looks like the scrutiny is not applying everywhere where it needs to at the current moment. Currently, Kyler is reviewing the Nothing Phone 3 and we'll be sure to highlight some of its photo aspects in that review when it does come out. I mean, it doesn't seem like they needed to, to lie about it. It actually seems uh, like a quite capable and competent smartphone, but uh, it's a shame that this happened. But you know what's not gonna shame you? Reese. He might actually, I don't know. I don't think he's feeling up for it today though. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and I'll jump straight in. Starting off, we have this Govi RGB floor lamp for only $59.99, making it $40 off. These look phenomenal in person. I am a big fan. But then we also have this Intel Core i5 2600KF desktop processor for $118, making it $71.99 off. And then lastly today, we have this Alienware 34 inch curved 165 Hertz QD OLED gaming monitor for $549.98, making it $149 and 
two cents off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like the precedent that AI companies just get a free deal when it comes to consuming all of their content for their language models is changing because there is now a settlement that has been reached between Anthropic, an AI company, and authors of various different books in a lawsuit that was going on between them. So the authors who filed the suit said that this is a historic settlement that will benefit all class members who are part of the class action, and they look forward to announcing details of the settlement in the coming weeks. It has not been announced exactly what this is and who on which side is going to get more or less money out of this. However, there has been a ruling on this case from a judge previously who indicated that, yes, while it does count as fair use for companies like Anthropic to use pieces of books for their large language model training, the problem lies in their acquisition of said material. If they didn't buy the book, then they are pirating it, and that's where the complaint can come in. So the piracy damages is kind of what's being looked at here, with up to $750 per infringed work, and with the amount of pirated works being calculated at $7 million, that is billions of dollars that could potentially be involved for Anthropic to be on the hook for. However, with the settlement being reached, it could wind up that it's significantly less than that. It's not exactly quite clear. However, this is allegedly supposed to be setting a precedent for the rest of the industry where this could make it so that further lawsuits that happen down the line could quote this one and then make it so that AI companies will start have to paying out for not the use of various different media, but the illicit acquisition of said media. So we'll see how, again, all this plays out. They said that they're going to announce this in the future, hopefully in the coming months or weeks, we should know more details about this, how much exactly Anthropic is going to have to pay out, and where exactly all this is going to go down. And what's going down with uDNA, or rDNA5, is uh, somewhat more known, thanks to a well-known leaker giving us details about the upcoming setup for these GPUs. And what is clear is that it looks like AMD is returning to a true flagship that could be coming out for gamers. So rDNA5, uDNA, the the U stands for unified because they're supposed to be bringing their compute architecture with their gaming architecture and fusing them back together. And we're looking at a 96 compute unit top dog GPU, as you can see right there with their universal memory controllers lining all around, which indicates that it might have a 512 bit memory bus, which is bigger than what we had on the 7900 XTX. However, the amount of compute units that was on the 7900 XTX was indeed 96. So it's gonna be about the same in that, but two architectures newer, and then also potentially having a bigger memory bus, which would allow it to hopefully pop that one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, especially if AMD moves on from GDDR6 in their GPUs, because they still haven't done that. We could be looking at a much significantly faster memory setup on the RX 10700, 10900, whatever they end up calling it. They might change their naming scheme to compete uh, with NVIDIA a little bit differently, but it does show that they are looking at making some changes in their architecture that's going to allow it to have better setup for gaming, but also better setup for the compute. But it's a unified architecture and we get to see this 96 compute unit block diagram along with some of the smaller ones going all the way down to a 12 compute unit setup. It's just more details coming out about the next generation of GPUs. We already heard from NVIDIA about Rubin and how that's now being tested with TSMC. They're working on getting into production for that. AMD is working on their architecture for RDNA 5 or uDNA. And hopefully we could have a pretty good 2026 or 20, early 2027 when it comes to new gaming upgrades rather than what we have right now. One can hope. And I'm going to hope you said something in yesterday's episode of Hot News. Let's see what you had to say in the comments. We got Eric Wright saying, not going to lie, I'm playing Wu Chang with frame gen on. Without, I get 75 FPS. With, I get locked 120 FPS. And it feels much better. But I am fully against using frame gen to get the FPS above 60. Okay, so you're saying lower FPS to get it above 60. I am working on a video right now where I am having the exact opposite experience without frame gen. I'm getting it in the 20s and with frame gen i'm getting it in like 40s to 50s and it feels way better 
with multi-frame gen on. I was a poo-pooer of multi-frame gen, and I think I have found a use case where it makes sense. It is not a legitimate use case, but it is a use case that does happen to exist, and uh, that'll be coming out in a video shortly where we, we discuss that and show that off. But uh, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I have found the one instance where I think it is the opposite. But also, I'm curious, uh, Wu Chang, I've seen reviews of it. It seems like my type of game. I really enjoyed Black Myth Wukong, and this kind of seems like down that same path, but just with more gooner elements to it, which, you know, I haven't played Stellar Blade uh, for that reason. I kind of just uh, have decided to play other games. I'm currently jamming Final Fantasy X on my Steam Deck. That's my game of choice lately. But I, I, I've looked at Wu Chang and I'm like, this, this feels like a game I would enjoy. I'm curious how you're enjoying it, Eric. Let me know in the comments, or if any of you uh, have played Fallen Feathers, let me know your opinions of it down below, and we'll talk to you hopefully tomorrow for more of the hottest tech news.